Hey guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. We just surpassed a $25,000 threshold in the dividend growth portfolio. Fantastic way of seeking a diversified passive exposure in single stock using the power of M1 Finance. We're going to chronicle uh, each and every one of the holdings. So it'll be a 77 stock pick video, which seemingly are pretty important. You'll recognize most of the holdings in here as I'm a value investor. Most of the Dow components are represented here. You'll notice that most of the positions are up. Uh, we're up uh, over the last couple of years in this portfolio. A nice $10,000 bill, nice stack of high society. So while everybody else out there is seeking the emu shimus of the world, uh, I'm steadily over here beating a drum of passive investing, making killer money uh, on uh, a relatively light amount of money. But the, the, the fact of the matter is I'm not taking on a whole hell of a lot of risk uh, to, to get these uh, over and above average returns on my money. So with that, let's kick you into the account. We'll take a look at what we're working with in the dividend growth portfolio within M1 Finance. All right, guys, I'd like to welcome everybody into the M1 Finance account. It's been a minute anyway since I've done an update on this account, and there is a lot of uh, information here to be updated. I think while a lot of people are uh, seeking out to uh, Ipu Shipu Ipu Nipu cryptocurrency investments, uh, I'm over here beating a small drum here in the corner for those retail investors. They really want to get involved in the stock market passively. And they want to do so with as little risk as possible. I think what people are really missing is their own personal uh, palette for risk uh, and their own tolerance to risk. And I, I think they misalign uh, what it is that they're realistically trying to uh, achieve in the stock market. Um, these are real gains here, just shy of 10,000, 9542 to be exact, um, on a relatively small amount of. Uh, uh, of investment capital here, a net cap flows just shy of sixteen thousand. So, on a on a on a risk adjusted basis, when you're talking about entering into what is now seventy seven holdings within this portfolio, it's crept just over twenty five thousand. Now, I do want to disclose to you guys, I've just put uh, a five thousand dollar bill into this. I've been saving up for a while. The beauty of M one Finance is such that I do dollar cost average this account. $50 uh, every couple weeks. So I do have some pretty consistent cash flow moving into the account, but I don't miss that money. M1 Finance makes it uh, uh, really easy to take that uh, and absorb it into the portfolio slowly over time, which is a fundamental strategy that I think a lot of new investors absolutely miss. Uh, it's not sexy enough. It's not going to get them where they want to go, but I would you know, probably say this and say that if you did invest in Shimu, Emu, Timu, Wimu uh, cryptocurrency and you were able to make $9,500, you'd have YouTube channels cropping up all over the place thinking that they were the greatest thing since sliced bread. This is just value investing 101. Um, this is how wealth has been made uh, over the decades and this is how it's been done taking on the least amount of risk. The only thing I need to w worry about uh, are Costco and Home Depot closing their doors. I, I need to worry about Procter & Gamble stop selling product. I need to think about companies like Colgate, Palmolive, and Coca-Cola Classic, and Pepsi going out of business. So when you talk about from a value proposition um, and a risk-reward type of profile, I think, unfortunately, this escapes a lot of investors. This has been uh, in play now since December of 2019, late December 2019. So, you know, coming up on two years, not even two years to have this level of performance to allow these companies uh, just to sit. Uh, I passively invest this account. And... Um, I, I will share a, a hybrid version of this portfolio. It will not be the exact same version of this portfolio, but it will be enough with 50 holdings to get you the idea of how I've broken up the S&P 500 in the applicable slices. Now, I do uh, keep real estate out of this slice. I invest heavy in real estate in my Roth IRA account. Um, so this is a taxable brokerage account. And I, I just think that real estate holdings, uh, whether it be single stock or uh, ETFs, are more appropriate to be held um, in those tax advantage accounts. But for a taxable account, these are the 10 slices that make sense for me. Uh, I've selected the allocation that makes sense for me. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you, how do you figure that, that uh, percentage? It's arbitrary. 
If you want to have health care up on top of the food chain, you absolutely can. I think for me, you can see some method to my madness here in that I didn't really want to see an, an underweighted sector in the S&P 500 like materials to be on the top end here with the bulk of the money. So that's why you'll see that a 5% uh, allocation is awarded to the material sector here um, and technology being my absolute favorite here on the top end uh, for, uh, for my uh, sector uh, exposure here. So we'll cruise up to the top. I really want to get into the holdings. This is really the meat and potatoes of, you know, a lot of people are coming out with the top three stocks to buy. I don't do that crap anymore. I, I just don't. Um, I think there's a better way of value investing. The chances of you picking the top three stocks to buy and having them work out for the rest of your life are very, very slim. In other words, you may purchase those stocks based on hype. You may purchase those stocks based on them having extreme momentum in the industry. But things change over the long term. And you really need to look at those companies that have staying power. Each and every one of these companies have staying power. And you'll recognize most everything in this list. So we're going to go through here and do a quick shot. 77 positions in, in less than 10 minutes. The, the real value here is that you can invest in uh, all of these at the same time. Whenever funding flows into M1 Finance, you're basically putting a little bit into each one of these holdings, 77 holdings. It's basically like my own personalized ETF uh, where I don't consider this as a dividend growth portfolio to be diversified per se, but it is a really cool way of seeking exposure in dividend growth stocks when I think traditionally a lot of people have looked at the market and said, man, I, I can only afford you know uh, five or 10 shares or so of, of X number of companies, maybe 10 or 15, whereas M1 Finance really allows you to expand that traditional reach and get exposure to more companies. So pay attention to the green, pay attention to the unrealized gain as I scope through this. We've always obviously got some. Amgen I'm real surprised about. I got that on a nice dip. Um, but that's uh, down 10%. The idea here is that if one company is down, the remainder of the holdings kind of absorb those those downturns. You can see here I'm up over 10 shares of Cisco. Great stuff here. Uh, Broadcom, Thermo Fisher Scientific. And I'm going to cruise down here. There's Travelers, a nice Dow component, and McDonald's as well as Intel. Lots of Dow components. I think this is probably void of just a couple Dow components, uh, which is Walgreens Boots Alliance and uh, American Express uh, are the two Dow components that I do not have in this portfolio. But I actually think I've got the remaining 28 represented in this portfolio. Value, value, value is the idea here. And even though the dividends that are being rendered might be a few cents each or a few dollars each, they do add up over time. And the idea is to think about each of these 77 holdings as their own standalone business. They're working while you're working. Better to have these in a small capacity than to not have them at all. And uh, Bank of America, there's a new addition to the financials. You, for you guys that have followed me for a while, you'll notice that I've increased the positions up to 77 in here. And I'll try to earmark those as we cruise on down the list of these 77. I mean, this is, this is incredible. This is just an awesome way to invest. The cool thing about this, man, is you can invest with as little as 1000 you know, $500.00. You start to get a little bit watered down. I think the twenty-five thousand in this account is is appropriate um, to get some starting positions in all these holdings because you don't want to hold, you know, micro holdings in some of these bigger names. You you can, um, but I, I think with a five hundred dollars start, I think M One Finance is probably more appropriate for ten or fifteen holdings if this is a strategy that you want to pursue for yourself. And it doesn't mean that you can't add to those uh, sectors or the slices the way that I've got them divvied up into the future. But I just think you need to be kind of careful with watering down the account um, too much on the onset with very little money and maybe too many holdings. You want to make sure that your uh, dollar amount that you allocate is appropriate. Now this account, the way that I've built it, is appropriate to hold a half a million dollars. Absolutely. 100% these holdings um, could indefinitely increase in value. And that's exactly what I aim to do 
is as I slowly fund this account over time, we're going to increase each of these positions over the long term as these are the holdings that I'm the most comfortable holding. There's JP Morgan and Citigroup there on the bottom end. Those are new starting positions. So new fundings will flow into each of those new holdings. So up to 77. It's a fantastic way of investing passively in the market. A lot of fun to do this. No, no stress. You know, you own a nice basket of really good gems of the stock market. Again, heavily represented uh, by the Dow components as well as some of those other companies uh, on the aristocrats list and the dividend kings list. Just another example of how uh, strategic and how creative you can get with your investing application as this does take up one of my multiple buckets through dividend growth investing in my strategy. So with that, guys, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. So we've come out of the M1 Finance account. Hope you appreciated this. No fluff. No fluff. Uh, really, this is just uh, uh, to invest or not to invest. You need to answer that question for yourself on how you want to seek out your exposure to the market. This is just what makes sense to me. I declare what an anticipated uh, return could look like. Um, these results uh, are not guaranteed into the future. Um, it's been going for about two years, so give you a nice benchmark on how quickly you can accumulate money with the power of the stock market, value investing the market, uh, gaining those uh, opportunities to seek exposure to those good quality companies that in each of their cases are small businesses uh, aimed at in each capacity to pay you back while you're off doing things with your time. Passive investing is working around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you, and, and the results speak for themselves, guys. If you appreciate the message, want to make sure and subscribe to the channel, share the message with anybody out there that might be interested in M1 Finance. Um, I share the portfolios with each and every one of you guys uh, for your leisure and viewing pleasure. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the message, and good luck in your investment future.